we shall commence this module by discussing about environment in brief. Nature protects if she is protected. The earth has been around for 4.6 billion years. Scaling this time down to 46 years, humans have been around for only 4 hours and the industrial revolution started just 1 minute ago. During this short span of time, we have ravaged the planet for ways to get fuels and raw materials and have been the cause of extinction of huge numbers of animals and plants while we have multiplied our population to that of a plague. Environmental issues such as climate variation, the depletion of natural resources and pollution are major concern of worldwide consequence concerning governments, businesses and consumers globally. Processes such as industrialization, changes in farming methods and depletion of natural resources are some of the factors responsible for damaging the environment. The growth and development of societies and civilizations have led to the misappropriation of natural resource causing changes in ecosystems with disquieting and alarming concerns. British rule of India witnessed many laws connected to environment. Amongst the earlier ones were Shore Nuisance, Bombay and Kolaba, Act of 1853 and the Oriental Gas Company Act of 1857. The Indian Penal Code of 1860 levied a fine on everyone who deliberately ravages the water of any public spring or reservoir. Besides the court penalized negligent act, British India also enacted laws with the goal of preventing air pollution. Significant amongst these were the Bengal Smoke Nuisance Act of 1905 and the Bombay Smoke Nuisance Act of 1912. Whilst the effect of these laws was not noteworthy, British enacted legislations laid down the foundation for the growth of environmental regulations in India. The Indian constitution clearly mentions that it is the state's duty to protect and ameliorate the environment and to preserve the wildlife and forest of the country. It imposes an onus and responsibility on all the native to defend and ameliorate the natural environment including lakes, rivers, forests and wildlife as we share the common universe. In India, the Department of Environment was constituted in 1980 to guarantee a vigorous environment for the nation. This far ahead in 1985 became the Ministry of Environment and Forest. The constitutional provisions are supported by a number of laws, rules and acts. Soon after the Bhopal gas tragedy, the EPA that is Environment Protection Act of 1986 came into force and it is considered as a sunshade law making as it seals many splits in the prevailing laws. Later various laws came into actuality as the problem began ascending. The main goal of the present module is to summarize the various Indian environmental laws and critically analyze their implementation. At the end the module provides some suggestions on how could India effectively protect its environment. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the various Indian environmental laws enacted till date, critically analyze these laws, comprehend about some startling facts about the environment, know about some major issues which engender environment degradation, know about various methods through which our environment can be protected, gather some knowledge about the recent development made in this field by the Indian government. Let us look upon the various Indian environmental laws enacted till date. General 1986 The Environment Protection Act was passed by the Indian Parliament on 23rd of May 1986. This act refers to the Stockholm Conference of 1972 and is based on Article 253 of the Constitution. By virtue of this act, the Union Government has armed itself with considerable powers deemed essential to avert control and prevent environmental pollution. These powers include coordination of activities by states, planning and implementation of nationwide environmental programs, laying down environmental quality standards, particularly those governing emissions or discharge of environmental pollutants, setting restrictions on the location of industries, etc. The powers provided in the Act are indeed comprehensive. The coverage includes handling of hazardous substances, prevention of environmental accidents, collaborating environmental research, inspection of polluting industrial units, establishment of pollution control laboratories, dissemination of information, etc. 1986, the Environment Protection Rules lays down procedures for establishing standards of emission and discharge of environmental pollutants. 1989, 
the objective of hazardous waste management and handling rules is to manage the emission collection import treatment storage and handling of hazardous waste 1989 the manufacture storage and import of hazardous rules describes the terms used in this context and set up a power to examine once a year the industrial doings associated with harmful chemicals and inaccessible storage accommodations 1989 the production consumption export import and storage of unsafe microorganism or genetically caused organism or cells rules were familiarized with an opinion to defend the environment wildlife and health in association with the application of genetic factor technology and microorganism 1991 the public liability insurance act and rules of amendment 1992 was scaled up to foster public liability insurance aiming at providing instant relief to the person influenced by accident at the time of dealing with any hazardous substance 1995 the national environmental tribunal act was enacted to provide compensation for damages to property persons and the environment arising from any activity involving hazardous substances 1997 the national environment appellate authority act was enacted to entertain appeals related to restrictions of areas where classes of industries etc are prescribed subject to certain safeguard under the epa 1998 the biomedical waste management and handling rules legally binds the healthcare institutions to integrate the process of proper handling of hospitals waste such as segregation collection disposal and treatment 1999 the environment rules 1999 provides for elaborated provisions related to the areas needed to be avoided for siting of industries precautionary measures to be kept in mind for site selection and also the aspects of environmental protection which must have been incorporated during the execution of the industrial development projects 2000 the municipal solid waste management and handling rules 2000 cover every municipal authority accountable for the task of collecting segregating storing transportation processing and discharging of municipal solid waste 2000 the ozone depletion substances regulation and control rules were enacted to regulate the production and consumption of ozone depleting substances 2001 the batteries management and handling rules of 2001 cover every manufacturer importer assembler reconditioner dealer auctioneer consumer and bulk consumer involved in the manufacturing processing selling purchasing and using of batteries or components so as to regulate and ensure the environmentally safe disposal of used batteries 2002 the noise pollution regulation and control amendment rules contain the terms and conditions which are imperative to prevent noise pollution permit the use of loud speakers music systems or public address systems during night hours that is between 10 pm to 12 midnight on or during any cultural or religious festival occasion 2002 the biological diversity act was enforced to preserve the biological diversity for sustainable use of its components and for just and equitable sharing of the benefits which arise out of the use of biological resources and knowledge connected with it forest and wildlife 1927 the indian forest act and amendment 1984 is one of the many surviving colonial statutes it has been evolved to encompass the laws connected to forest the transit of forest produce and the amount of duty to be levied on timber and other forest produce 1972 the wildlife protection act rules 1973 and amendment 1991 deals with the protection of birds and animals and with all sorts of issues related to it 1980 the forest conservation act and the rules 1981 provides for the protection and the preservation of the forest water 1882 the easement act permits private rights to use groundwater by considering it as an attachment to the land it also signifies that the whole amount of surface water belongs to the state and hence is a state property 1897 the indian fisheries act provides for setting up of two sets of penal offences such that any person can be sued by the government for using any dynamite or other explosive substances in any way whether coastal or inland with an intention to catch or ravage any fish 
1956, the River Boards Act entrusts the states with power to enroll the central government in establishing an advisory river board to cater to the issues that arise in interstate cooperation. 1970. The Merchant Shipping Act is concerned with waste that arises from the ships along the coastal areas within a specified radius. 1974 The Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act provides for establishing an institutional structure for averting and preventing water pollution. It sets up standards for water quality and effluent. The CPCB was embodied under this act. 1977 The Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Cess Act provides for the levy and collection of fees or cess on the industries and local authorities consuming water. 1978 The Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Cess Rules establishes the standard definitions and provides for the kind of meters that the consumers of water is required to affix. It also indicates the location at which these meters should be affixed. 1991 The Coastal Regulation Zone Notification regulates various types of activities including construction. It provides some protection to the backwaters and estuaries. Air 1948 The Factories Act and Amendment in 1987 was the first act to show concern for the working condition and working environment of the workers. The amendment of 1987 has strengthened its environmental focus and broadened its application to perilous processes. 1981 The Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act provides for the monitoring and prevention of air pollution. It empowers the CPCB to execute this act. 1982 The Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Rules concerns the processes of the meeting of the boards and the powers given to them. 1982 The Atomic Energy Act deals with the radioactive waste. 1987 The Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Amendment Act entrusts the Central and State Pollution Control Board with the power to tackle with grave emergencies of air pollution. 1988 The Motor Vehicle Act mentions that all hazardous waste needs to be properly packaged, labeled and transported. Let us now understand how has India performed in protecting its environment. Implementation of the laws which we discussed earlier. India's population has almost crossed 1.3 billion although it accounts for only 2.4% of the total world land mass it sustains around 17% of the world population upsurge in the density of population is a matter of great concern as it puts enormous pressures on our natural resources and adversely affect the quality of life India has been ranked at an abyss small 155th position in the global list of countries on the performance in high priority environmental issues. The 2014 Environmental Performance Index has ranked 178 countries in total. Among these countries India is placed at the 155th position with an index score of 31.23 points. India rank is much below to that of the BRICS peers. Among the BRICS countries South Africa was placed at the 72 rank with an index score of 53.51 followed by Russia which has gained 73rd rank with 53.45 points followed by Brazil which was ranked 77th with 52.97 points and China which gained 118th rank that is 118th rank with 43 points Besides India has fared poorly compared to the neighboring countries like Nepal and Pakistan which are ranked 139th and 148th respectively the overall list is topped by Switzerland followed by Luxembourg Australia Singapore and Czech Republic in India we have a number of legislations for the preservation of environment but the laws are just for ornamental purposes there is no proper execution of these laws The legislature was quick enough to enact the laws regulating most aspects of industrial and developmental activities but was very conscious to sanction enforcement budgets or require effective implementation across the country. 80s and 90s witnessed totally new legislations which led to the creation of new enforcement agencies and strengthening of the old ones. Some expert bodies were asked to perform specific tasks like environment impact assessment regulation of 1994 was generated. 
in response to the suggestions of apex court union government has established national coastal management authority and corresponding state agencies further the past agencies have seen an increment in the budget and staff of the central pollution control board and state pollution control board charged with implementing the water and air acts despite these initiatives the quality of urban and rural environment continues to decline the major causes of this decline attributes to the weak performance of enforcement agencies bpcb is continuously starved of funds for several years the government stopped funding and restricted expenditure to only a third of the total requirement sc in indian council for enviro legal action 5 union of india said if the mere enactment of the laws relating to preservation of environment was to ensure a clean and pollution free environment then india would perhaps be the least polluted country in the world but this is not so there are more than 200 centers and state statutes which have some direct or indirect connection with the environment protection the enactment of these regulations has unfortunately not resulted in environmental degradation which on the contrary has seen an increment over the years let us now discuss some points facts about the environment first Pollution is one of the prominent killers which affects more than 100 million people worldwide. It is comparable to fatal diseases like malaria and HIV. Next, according to a new ranking released recently, India is the seventh most environmentally hazardous country in the world. Next, Vapi in Gujarat and Sukhinda in Orissa are amongst the world's top 10 most polluted places according to a New York based non-for-profit group. Next, as many as 51 indian cities have been cited as uh, having extremely high air pollution patna lucknow faridabad raipur and ahmedabad top the list next china is the world's largest carbon dioxide emitting country united states is at number 2 next almost 80% of the total urban waste that is generated in india is dumped in the river ganga next There are around 500 million cars in the world as of now and by 2030 this number will rise to 1 billion. This means that the level of air pollution will surge by around 200%. Next, in India the water of river Ganga is gradually becoming septic especially due to dumping of half burned dead bodies and enshrouded babies. Next, Antarctica is the cleanest place on this planet protected by anti pollution laws. Next, The UAE is among the biggest waste producers and water consumers. Next, according to WHO study, Delhi has surpassed Beijing and is currently the world's most polluted city. This puts its people at a dangerous risk of respiratory diseases. Next, over 2/5 of the tropical forest have already been ravaged and another hectare is damaged every second. Next, while the US accounts for only 5% of the world's population, They produce 72% of all hazardous waste and consume 33% of world's total paper consumption. The US is responsible for almost 26% of world's total energy consumption. It's high time we become the change we want to see and combat these disquieting problems to eradicate these disturbing statistics and facts that we see. Moving on to discuss the role of Indian judiciary in protecting the environment. Since about the late 1980s the Apex Court of India has been proactively engaged in India's environmental issues the executive and the legislative branches of government plans implement and address environmental issues in most of the countries the indian experience is different the supreme court of india has been engaged in decoding and initiating amendments in the environmental jurisprudence directly the court has evolved new regulations to preserve the environment pondered over environmental laws created new organizations and structures and conferred additional powers on the existing ones through a network of directions and judgments devices such as public interest litigation that is pil have been significantly relied upon to resolve environmental problems next we shall understand the major causes of environmental degradation earth provides enough to satisfy every man's need but not every man's greed It was said by Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. The major factors that engender the environmental degradation are listed below. Rapid economic growth, rapid population growth, 
urbanization without sufficient investment in environmental safeguards, political interference and lack of will, ineffective functioning and lack of funding for the regulatory agencies, non-serious response to the environmental offenses. Now let us look into the suggestions. We need ecological growth, not mere economic growth. Emerging economies such as India, Russia, China, Brazil and South Africa, we, they have all experienced modest improvement over the past decade, but at the same time they have paid an environmental price for this rapid growth. The major issues that need to be taken care of are first, odd and even numbered card running system. One of the best methods to diminish the air and the noise pollution to a considerable extent is to allow the odd and even numbered cars to run on alternate days of week. For example, on Mondays there will be only odd numbered cars on the roads and on the Tuesdays only even numbered cars would be allowed to run. Second, burden of proof. There is a need to amend the various laws to lay the onus of approving the case on the accused rather than on the prosecutor. Third, quick resolution to the environmental disputes. Fourth, one uniform code to tackle with all environmental problems. Fifth, incentives for controlling pollution. Now we will summarize what we have discussed in this module. As you read this, one and a half acres of forest is being cut down. That's correct. One and a half acres of forest is cut down every second. Man has been interested in nature since time immemorial, but today he thinks himself to be the master of nature. Rapid development has been achieved at the cost of ravaging forest, poisoning lakes with pesticides and air quality being deteriorated with noxious gases. Our foremost ancestors used to live in a rich and competitive world delicately connected to the environment. They knew the sources of water and use of plants and animals for food and indicial purposes. But the hunters and gatherers exploited the environment to fulfill their requirements by felling trees which has resulted into significant changes in grass and shrubs with the use of fire. However, they could not harm the environment to a great extent because of their low population, nomadic ways of life and primitive technology. The domestication of animals and plants gave impetus to agricultural technology. The human population on earth has grown as much in the last 50 years as in the past 4 million years. Though we have rich traditions and culture of living in peace and harmony with nature, but with industrialization we have become indifferent towards nature. Previously, no laws existed for the preservation of environment in this country other than some indirect laws as the people of our country used to love and respect their fellow organisms. But in the new scenario, as growth and pollution went hand in hand, man began using the natural resources so carelessly that it became quite necessary to conserve these resources, otherwise there would not be any resources left for the future generations to come. Keeping this in mind, laws are enacted for the preservation of environment, which were quite inactive till mid 80s, but later as our government became more vigilant towards this issue, so it started incorporating new laws, rules and regulations to save the environment. At present, there are above 200 legislations which directly or indirectly relate to the environment. But with the increase in legislations, the environment has kept on degrading. Many legislations were enacted, but they were not executed properly as they had some intrinsic defects in them which were hindering in proper execution of these laws, weak performance of enforcement agencies further extended this problem. In order to conserve our environment, judiciary and legislature must detect these defects so that these laws can be implemented properly. Rather than making so many legislation, they should make one common code which should encompass in it all the issues dealing with environment. And also there should be one single forum which should deal with all the problems related to environment and these codes should be easily accessible, well equipped with scientific knowledge well aware of environmental jurisprudence and efficient enough to punish polluters accordingly. It therefore is very humbly suggested that there should be one common code developed and environmental code should be established in every constituency consisting of judicial members assisted by a statutory panel of environmental experts attached to these codes. This forum should also welcome new ideas and suggestions which could help government in saving our natural resources. The air quality in Delhi has nose-dived in the recent past. 
As a result, Delhi government has introduced an environment tax on the commercial vehicles that enter the Delhi territory. More steps need to be taken in this direction.